Hashtag Dramas. Today's radio play, Whispering Walls, is based on another adventure of H. Ashton Wolf, former member of the French Detective Police, whose thrilling life story is appearing currently in the American Weekly, the magazine distributed at all first to Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. Whispering Walls was produced in the New York studios of the General Broadcasting Company. <laughs> It is nearing the ghostly hour of three in the morning. Two men and a woman are seated in the vast library of an ancestral chateau near Paris. The woman is nervously twisting a handkerchief. The men glance at the face of a tall clock in the corner and puff excitedly at their cigarettes. You, you must solve the mystery, Dr. Bethune. You've got to. We'll do our best. May I see you? I know, Doctor. Oh, it will have to be more than just your best. I can't stand these visitations any longer. If they keep up, I'll kill myself. Oh, Madame Bailey, you must control yourself. Control myself? That's easy enough to say. But wait until you see what I've seen here. That's what they've come from Paris for, Madame. It's nearing three o'clock. The visitation, as you call it, starts there? On the hour. How very punctual. Now, Madame Bailey, while you wait, I should like to ask you a few questions. Very well, Dr. McHugh. I should be glad of something to keep my mind off this horrifying thing. Very well. Question number one. Who are your nearest neighbors? I have the two. One is Professor Colbert, whose only interest in life is the history of extant races. He has a secretary who does the excavating for him. I say a lazy beggar, isn't he? The secretary does all the work and he reaps all the glory. But the professor is a cripple, paralyzed in his legs. Sorry, I take it all back. Does he ever leave his house? Yes. He's wheeled about in a chair by his secretary. Yes. And who is the other neighbor? The Comte a brute of a man who apparently lives only for hunting, riding, and the breeding of five dogs. Dogs, eh? Hmm. How very interesting. By the way, madame, you have sent your own dog away, haven't you? Yes, Dr. Bethune. If those tracks appear again, you may be sure they were not made by my dog. When did these mysterious occurrences begin, madame? As you already know, when my husband died, he left me with little more than the Miss Hatteau and a great number of debts. I wanted to get away from here for a while, so I... I thought it advisable to try to pay expenses by renting this place. I did so. To whom did you rent it, madame? To an American who wished to investigate the shooting. He arrived with a valet and its soldier, a huge fellow well over six feet. And I started on my holiday. Don't tell me they were scared, too. The next morning, the valet was found dead. Murder? No. The doctor said sheer terror had caused heart failure. And the American? He had to go into a nursing home to to gain his sanity. I don't wonder you have the jitters, madame. Mm, all right. Hello. It's one minute to three. You sit over there, Ashley, where you'll be right in line with those windows. I'll sit here where I can watch those stairs out in the hall. Now, madame, if you would be so kind as to turn out the light, we'll wait for the show to begin. Certainly, Dr. Quiet, everybody. Don't move. Now, I need to think. Do you hear that, Doctor? Yes. I can look. Let's go into the hall. Right, though. Yes, may I come through? Certainly. But don't turn on the light yet. I use my pocket flashlight here. Is this all that happened? Wait. You may see it yet. It is a horrible, shining death head. It's not down the stairs here in the hall. Thank you. Oh, look. The death head. I'll fix it. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, why did you do that? Quick. Come on, madame. Yes. Did you see that, doctor? That shot seemed to go right through it. Why, there, there's nothing there. Let's see if there are any tracks at the top of the stairs. It's Dr. Bertillon. Look, where? What is it? That oak panel is bleeding. Yeah. My bullet must have landed there. But why should blood appear? So you too have seen an oak panel bleed. I didn't tell you about this because I, I was afraid you wouldn't believe me. You see this happened before, madame? Yes. The first night I returned, I heard the whispering in the walls of my room. And I fired my revolver blindly in front of him. Blood poured from the bullet hole. Are you sure it's blood, madame? Yes, yes. It's real blood, all right, doctor. See? It's starting to coagulate. Mm. Look here. 
But don't touch the bell. Now, where are you? I'm saying, Doctor. You don't think a dog could be trained to walk on his hind legs and carry that grinning skull? Perhaps I don't. We'll see. What's our next news? Tomorrow we shall visit the two neighbors. The Count with his dogs and the professor whose specialty is digging for old bones. <laughs> Being disappointed, my dear doctor, in your investigations with Britain favor I must confess it isn't, Professor Colbert. Frankly, I'm puzzled. Indeed. Well, can I be of any assistance? Yes, I think so. Sometimes discussing a case with a layman gives us investigators a new slant on things. <laughs> well, I, I should be honored if you would look on me as a friend, Doctor. Thank you, Professor. Well, my secretary and I will be only too happy to serve you both here. Oh, yes, sir. Very nice of you both, I'm sure. We intend to spend one more night in the chateau. And if we discover nothing tangible, I shall throw up the case. You yes. intend to spend one more night there, eh? Yes. If I may say so, that takes a lot of courage. And if I may say so, that's what we have plenty of. By the way, Professor, we just called on Count Doré. Do you know him? No, he, is, he seems to be rather an unfriendly sort of man. Yes, we found that out. We won't allow anyone to approach his house or his kennels. If he has nothing to hide, why does he set guards around his dog? <laughs> he prevented you from looking at his dog, did he? Yeah. Oh, but uh, my dear doctor, what have dogs to do with the case? Oh, didn't you know? A very queer track, like a paw mark of a huge dog, has been found in and about the chateau. Oh, really? And Madame Bovey tells us that a luminous dog has been seen in the shrubbery. Oh, and you think it might have been one of these couch animals, eh? No, well, if there isn't a real ghost. Then Doré is at the bottom of this trickery, according to my deduction. See, and his refusal to let you see his dog seems to bolster your fears. Mm, yes, you, you may be right. Don't you think so, Pierre? Uh, yes, sir. I, I do indeed. But the knife will catch the beast or man or whatever it is. How? Fences have been dug around the chateau. As you know, the ground hereabouts is soft red clay. We shall see the prince clearly. Mm, yes, but uh, how can you see him at night? I have brought two very powerful pocket flashlights from Paris. Yes, so, uh, may I see them? Oh, I don't carry my tools around with me, Professor. I have left them in my room along with my revolver. Oh. Tonight, if I see the slightest movement, I shall shoot at once. Oh, how I wish I could be with you. Terrible to be paralyzed as I am and unable to take part in the exciting activities of life. Yes, it is unfortunate. You have our profound sympathy. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Well, I'm afraid we must be going. Come, Martin Wolf. Right with you, sir. Well, Pierre will show you to the door. You must forgive me for not rising, gentlemen, at least to bid you a dear, Doctor. I'm very tired. Oh, that's quite all right, Professor. Thank you for letting us have so much of your valuable time. Oh, not at all, not at all. So welcome at any time. Well, goodbye, Professor. Oh, yeah. Goodbye, Professor. Oh, goodbye, gentlemen. Come again. I purpose to lift my stick. We must go back. I want to see if our friend, the professor, is really paralyzed. Yes? I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm afraid I left my stick. One moment, please. I'll fetch it. I'm not to be let in again. Just as I thought. Mm. The professor's compliment, but he begs you to excuse him and he sends you your stick. So the professor regrets his inability to take part in the exciting activities of life, does he? <laughs> Just wait until midnight, I suppose. And we'll see about that. You will. I'm sure of it, Dr. DePeel. There he is, Doctor. Hear him? Yes. You got the flashlight from the Volvo, Doctor? Yes, right here. Quiet, man. He got it again. Get a wrecked bell. My God, what's this horrible ringing? Quick, Dr. Smith. Turn on your flashlight. I say, Doctor, my lamp's gone wrong. Try yours. Mine won't bite either. This place is bewitched. Those flashlights were brand new. Look! 
the death head. This time I'll bring her down. Still front. You've shot straight through. This time I won't. I'll throw my gun at her. Oh, did you did you kill the ghost? Why, quickly. Yes. There you are, sir. Why? Why, the hall is empty. No sign of anything. Oh, yes. A few signs. Look. Oh, the bleeding tunnel. Yes, where apparently one of my shots took effect. Apparently? You mean? Certainly. The first shots were blank. They thought of that when they broke into our room this afternoon and cheated the last flashlight. They? Who? Your invalid professor and his secretary. Oh. will attack them. But where are they? You see, my gun went through that mirror. No. There's a secret passage behind it. Yes. These are what they call Chinese mirrors. Transparent from either side in the dark. Well, Our ghost could watch every move we made. Here, let's find the spring which opens the secret panel. Oh, so that's why you take things scared, so he could hear you. Yes. How did you know the professor wasn't really crippled? I noticed his slippers this morning. The soles were quite worn through and the heels run over. And the real invalid slippers would be quite new. Exactly. Hmm. Ah, here's the spring off. Come, we must go through the passage and catch our poor invalid. But we have no light here. Yes. I say one flashlight. And here's your revolver. But the, the bleeding panel, Dr. Bethune, how did that happen? Yes, madame. Blood was squirted by a syringe on the outside. What is it? What? Here's a door. Have you done, lady? Yes, I will. Now. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. The secretary. Why is he on the floor? Well, dear, where's the professor? He's gone. He's done me in. The dog. He's hiding. Doctor, what did he mean about the dog? The professor was a mysterious dog. Yes, he wore shoes with fake stripes. That's why there was only a double row of feet. And, and the whistling wall. What caused them? This machine. I'll turn the handle. Listen. I simply is when you see things in the light. And yet, Dr. Bethune, why should they select Mike at home for their operations? Because it has been the headquarters of the gang for years, and they wanted to scare you off and keep it to themselves. For oh, years? Then my husband was one of them? Yes, Madame Beauvais. But where's the professor? He has managed to escape us this time, but don't worry, Ashton Wolf. We shall meet him again. <laughs> Don't miss the thrilling details of this newest adventure of H. Ashton Wolf. It will appear in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly. This is Wentworth announcing. Your own announcer will now give you further details of the many exciting true life stories and articles appearing in the American Weekly, the magazine distributed with all first Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. Today's radio play, The Spirit Murder, is based on another intriguing case from the records of H. Ashton Wolfe, former member of the French Detective Police, whose thrilling stories appear currently in the American Weekly, the magazine distributed with all first to Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. 
The Skidded Murder was produced in the New York studios of the General Broadcasting Company. Thank mm-hmm. you.